Hey everyone, this is um, the third episode in my little series on um, sewing machine foot pedals for vintage sewing machines. Now, <clears throat> the third section here is about what are what are referred to as electronic foot pedals. Uh, these are sort of the forerunners or the the pioneers, if you will, technologically that would lead to the foot pedals that are available in today's modern sewing machines. The plastic machines that you can buy today have a lot of software, many of them do, they have software and they have micro electronics, not unlike the electronics in your smartphone. And because of that, they often will use uh, very specialized proprietary foot pedals. So this video is for uh, using generic electronic foot pedals, not those that are uh, specific to today's machines. In fact, if you, if you go to any uh, sewing machine dealer and you say, hey, my foot pedal's not working, something's wrong, I need a new one, you're probably gonna have to go to that manufacturer and it may even be specific to a certain model or range of models. <clears throat> Fortunately, in the vintage sewing machine world, things are most of the time not that uh, not th not that specialized. There are a few things you want to look for. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about how long we've had vintage foot pedals. Here's one from a Kenmore machine, and this is from the late 19, I would say maybe 71, 72. Uh, I have noticed in all of the Kenmores I've restored, I noticed uh, late 1960s Kenmores still had either, uh, they, they usually had the rheostat types um, of uh, just the you know, good old fashioned analog foot pedals. And then somewhere around 70, 71, they really went uh, full force with electronic pedals. Many of you who are familiar with uh, consumer items from this period in history, you will notice that you sometimes will see the term solid state. Uh, that was used in a lot of audio equipment <clears throat> and quite frankly, all sorts of things, even vacuum cleaners and so forth. And solid state re re referred to the fact that uh, electronic um, engineering had gone into uh, to these devices in order to control uh, the functions of electricity much more in a more sophisticated way and in a way that reduces heat buildup. So, uh, you know, this, this foot pedal that I'm showing you here, it'll get a little warm, but it's not gonna get anywhere as toasty warm as some of the older style foot pedals get. And those pedals are designed to get warm up to a point uh, because they, <clears throat> they use um, uh, radiant coils to hold back electricity. Not unlike, again, I, I think I mentioned, sort of like a, the way a toaster does. But once we get to this period, the solid state period, we are, uh, you have seen um, the introduction of capacitors, which came a little earlier than this. And then of course the transistor, which revolutionizes things like radios and it makes you know, the transistor handheld radio possible. And so that kind of technology spread everywhere, including sewing machine foot pedals, <laughs> believe it or not. And so, uh, I cannot speak to the longevity of the current electronic pedals, but this pedal that I'm, that I'm uh, showing you at the moment, this old Kenmore, it's about 50 years old and it still functions. Now, <clears throat> unlike the rheostats and particularly those Singer button style pedals, uh, it's, you know, whether you can get parts for an old electronic pedal is debatable. Uh, and what types of skills it would take to restore those, I'm not sure. I suspect it would involve soldering, and I do not have uh, access to either the tools or the parts to restore those. And so, let's suppose that you have, um, let's say you have a really old vintage machine that's electric, and you would like to no longer use a... Um, uh, an analog style rheostat pedal like this one I showed you in the earlier video in the first video uh, many of them look like this this is a rheostat style and they're metal and they have feet and lots of holes for heat to escape and you press them like an accelerator and they work and they and they've worked well for generations um, but let's say you want something that doesn't get warm or maybe you would like something that gives you <clears throat> a little more needle control slow sewing control 
many people believe that electronic pedals give more um, uh, gradations of control to the speed of the sewing machine than do the older analog style. Some of you may have different experiences with that, but that is something I've observed. I do think the Singer button style pedals can be adjusted and tuned for pretty amazing um, uh, slow needle control, at least with a Singer machine. I, I can't speak to using it on other machines, although people have tried. So, uh, let's suppose that you have one of those analog pedals, you want to replace it with something more modern. Or let's say you have a, uh, uh, an electronic pedal from the late 60s, 70s, and it's either quit working or it's tired. You want to check with your sewing machine brand because some brands require certain types of electronic pedals. But I have found that uh, the, of the vintage sewing machines that I have restored, it's been quite a few, quite a few brands and models. You can replace your old sewing machine foot pedal, whether it's a button style or a, a rheostat style, with an electronic pedal. Now, this pedal is set up for the traditional cords that have two wires in them. That is, that is, uh, you know, the electrical cords that all of the vintage machines that I'm aware of use. There are a few exceptions uh, when we get into the 60s and they start introducing three wire cords. But most of the machines that I have come across, um, with exceptions, have two wire um, electrical cords. It's not unlike the cord uh, that, that you might buy to rewire a lamp, for example. Now, this is a, an electronic pedal and it is a generic pedal. This, the, I'm, I'll explain why I really like this pedal specifically. There are lots to choose from. You can go on the internet, you can go on eBay, you can go all over, you can go to sewing machine suppliers, and they've got all kinds of things. When you start looking at pedals, you want to be careful. If you go online, make sure that that pedal does not say uh, that it works only with a specific brand because you can end up buying the wrong thing and it won't work. This one is generic. It is, uh, it is actually, I'll show you the label on it so you can see it up close. Um, it is made in Taiwan. It, is, uh, it has a capacity to handle uh, machines with up to 1.2 amps of power usage. And that's a, that's a pretty uh, generous um, uh, range. You may know of others that are higher, but this is, this is a pretty good range for, for our purposes in the vintage sewing machine world. Um, and it has UL certification, and that's a really nice thing to see. A lot of the things we get from overseas don't always have this, and I really like seeing that. Just a little extra um, value, I think, there. Uh, on the bottom of the machine, you're going to see there are these, they've applied some sort of um, rubbery foam. Um, it's almost like a label, but it's used to help provide friction because this pedal does not weigh anything, not even what the old Kenmore electronic pedal weighs, and uh, certainly not as heavy as the old, uh, the old uh, electromechanical style pedals I showed you in the prior two videos. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of ironic. You know, the old pedals were heavy, but you can't put them on carpet because they'll, they'll damage your carpet and the pedal because they have to breathe and cool. The new electronic pedals, they might get slightly warm, but you don't really get the heat buildup in these that you do in the old style. But if you put these on um, carpet, this is fabric, but pretend this is carpet, they tend to not stay put as much because they don't weigh as much. Uh, and that's why these little uh, rubber uh, uh, grip strips, for lack of a better word, that's why those are there. So this is a wooden table I have that fabric on. Pretend this is a wooden floor or a tile floor. Notice that when I put the pedal here, it, it has a pretty decent amount of grip. So again, if you're going to sew, uh, highly recommend that you either sew on um, some sort of solid surface flooring. If it's not wood or tile, uh, or maybe you don't have a choice. Maybe your house is, is all carpeting or lots of rugs. You want to take something that is solid and put it on top of where you can rest the pedal so you can use it at least while you're sewing. You can use you know anything you have on hand. You could use a cutting board. Um, although the cutting board itself might also go, go rolling around. So you want to find something that will stay put that is solid. And in the case of an electronic pedal, it's not so much about the heat as it is the fact that you need friction to, to make it stay put. Um, 
because I don't think you're going to enjoy sewing with your with your uh, foot pedal. It's like having an accelerator pedal on a car go flying around. Not a not a great thing to have. So I wanted to show you the inside of this pedal, just like I have shown you the inside of the rheostats in the first video, and then the inside of the carbon pile singer button pedal in the second video. Now. Uh, and this is good because when you get this pedal, if you were to order one of these, you can order the pedal and the pedal is going to come, I took it out of the little bag it came in, and it's going to come with another little bag and it's going to have this, this particular one that, I'm, that, I'm, uh, that I favor. It comes with a connector and two wire leads with little caps and they've already pre uh, pre-splice the insulation so when it's time to to combine the wires this these little ends will come right off so you don't have to you don't even need a uh, a wire uh, crimping or splicing tool and then it comes with two um, um, wire nuts provided and it even comes with a little stress relief um, uh, device that you can put when you install the cord then that that's that is done to keep the cord from being tugged on um, uh, when you're moving it around and it also helps uh, it's I think it's called cord strain relief it keeps it from being bent and and abused not that you would do that to yours but there it is um, <clears throat> so all of these things come with this foot pedal now I have been uh, wiring these foot pedals for my clients for quite a long time um, I can wire them to replace old, old electronic pedals if they are compatible, or I can use it to replace just about any of the old vintage foot pedals. The one, like I say, there are times when you cannot, um, you may not be able to replace, for example, um, if it's set up for knee control, and if, it's, if you have an old style rheostat like I had on the Necky machine, the one I was showing in the first video, that I'm going to have to replace. Um, this pedal is not designed to sit um, up into the table where you can use it for knee. I'm going to experiment and I may, I haven't decided this yet, you guys let me know what you think. I'm going to take this pedal and try to see if I can, once I've got it wired, I can wire it to the necky and then I'm going to see if I can come up with a way to install it in the table so that it can be used, pretend my fist is a knee here, and it could be so it, see if it could be used like a knee pedal I don't know maybe some of you have tried this or you've heard about it now <clears throat> this specific pedal I purchased from so classic uh, it's a website that sells sewing machine uh, or sewing supplies um, and it is uh, so sew classic uh, excuse me so sew hyphen classic.com and uh, I, I have no sponsorship there with them, but they are one of my primary suppliers for parts, reproduction parts. And uh, I get these pedals from them, and they have a cool service there. If you decide that you do not want to take the time to wire this pedal, or if you don't feel comfortable in your own ability to do so, they will wire it for you. All you have to do, if you buy the pedal and you purchase a cord that, that will go with this pedal, uh, a singer cord, a faff cord, a necky cord. Uh, they have they have cords for all sorts of uh, vintage sewing machines, um, as well as some of the newer ones. Well, they have a, a wiring service, so you can buy the pedal, and you can buy the cord that you need. And I think uh, you can pay. I think right now it's like two dollars and ninety nine cents. It's like three dollars. I mean, it's it would be worth even more than that to you, right? You have it wired up. It's done. Um, so consider that. Again, I, I don't do that. I don't. I typically uh, wire my own, and I'm going to show you uh, today. The main the main purpose of this video is to show you what the inside of one of these looks like. Most of you, many of you, have never seen the inside of any of these foot pedals, and that was part of the reason I wanted to uh, to do these videos, this series. Now, I need to take the shell off, and I wanted to show this to all of you because I thought it might be helpful. There are, on either side of the, of the pedal, there are plastic hinge pins. These are pins, they're like, they act like hinges. So watch when I press, on the left side I'm going to press down. Notice that the pedal, the upper part, is rocking. Okay, it's, it's rocking uh, and it's um, rocking on these pins and there's one on the other side. Now, this is an important point to note. This foot pedal, if you look at the side that has the hole where the cord is going to go, that side, 
if you look straight down where the where the uh, see if I can, I'm gonna have to zoom in I really want you to see this I want to make sure it's gonna show up for you okay if you notice there's the, there is the pin that uh, one of the hinge pins but notice you see the plastic just runs straight across there okay and it's it is it's inserted uh, the plastic side is inserted on the pin but if we switch on the other side where you do not see the hole for the cord notice that this side has an opening now you could easily miss this this is black plastic it's not always easy to see but look at that you can see the pin right but instead of that blast pla <laughs> instead of the black plastic um, coming all the way across there's an opening and this side is the one you want to pry open it's going to be a lot easier to get this off and you're much less likely to crack and split your new pedal if you do it this way so again you this is one of those little subtle things that you you may not notice because it's easy to miss but look here i can even put the screwdriver in there um, and this is where you want to open one side of this to get the top off and it's designed to do that so I'm going to set this, let's set this where you guys can see what I'm doing and where I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to turn my screwdriver. No, I'm not going to pry really hard, okay? Watch what happens when I pry the screw. Let's see, I don't know if I can turn this where you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, so watch, I'm going to pry and I'm going to pull the bottom toward me and there it came. I don't know if you saw that, but I pried it right off much easier if you try the other side you may end up having problems and the pedal's going to have problems but look what look at that i got it off and now <clears throat> there's a there's a little hinge at the top here is also hinged uh, against a little ledge of plastic so now i come back over to the other side and i can literally just take the top right off and there she is and this is a great example of how things started to get smaller. Now, what you're looking at in here, there are capacitors and transistors, okay? And there's a little circuit board. It's a kind of a little thing. And that's part of the reason this, this pedal doesn't weigh very much. And all of that you see there, that circuitry controls and manages the flow of electricity into your sewing machine when you are pressing on the, um, the pedal. And of course, Here's the, here's the top, here's where you're putting your foot, and of course, here's the, this has its own little button that it presses down, and uh, that's how, it, that's how it, you regulate power in these. So, now, <clears throat> I've shown you the inside of the rheostat, I've shown you the inside of the carbon pile in the prior two videos. Now that you've seen the inside of, of a generic electronic foot pedal, uh, you can imagine why I, I, almost like a mantra, I keep repeating myself over, do not drop your foot pedal. Be kind and gentle to your foot pedal, and it will be good to you. <laughs> because if you're not, if you're rough with these things, you can damage them. Now, obviously, there's no porcelain inside this foot pedal, but as you might imagine, just as if you were to drop your smartphone, you can only do that so many times. These uh, electronic bits are very sensitive and they don't like being handled roughly. Uh, and we know this with our, with our uh, computers. So again, those of you who have brand new sewing machines, your um, electronic, if we want to use, still use that term, uh, your foot pedals are really microelectronic at this point. They're even more sophisticated, uh, more complex than this one is. But this one is remarkable. And one of the reasons I keep, I order these in, uh, I usually order them in batches and I keep a number on hand. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned in the last video, the only vintage sewing machine pedals that I restore um, are the Singer button style pedals. If I have a rheostat paddle, pa paddle, pedal, like I showed in the first video, that, new, that newer one from the 60s is in great shape. If you have a rheostat uh, electromechanical foot pedal and it works great that's fantastic there's nothing wrong with using it and keeping it just make sure you put it on a solid surface because it's going to get warm and you don't want it to melt your carpeting but um, I the reason I keep these uh, electronic pedals is I always ask my customers when I'm getting ready to um, when they've when they've picked out a machine and they decided they want to purchase it I'll ask them do you have a preference would you like um, the original pedal 
Would you like the, uh, the knee pedal control? Would you like a Singer button style? Some people really do, particularly those who, um, who are traditional and they, you know, they, maybe they've had a machine in their family for generations and they brought it to me to service because I restore other people's machines. They may say, oh, no, 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 I want the button style restored. <clears throat> but about half of my customers either don't, they just want a new foot pedal. And, uh, and, I, and so I provide that and I can do that for them. Um, and one last thing to say, if you all get a foot pedal like this and you decide you, you don't want to, to wire it to the cord, what you're doing is you're wiring this to the cord, which you will then plug into the machine. If you don't want to do this, you can also have this done by a sewing repair center. Now, sewing machine dealers you know, we don't have nearly as many as we once did back in the old days, but many of you in your towns and cities, you might still have what are often called sew and vac centers, which is, which is just a shorthand way of saying sewing machine and vacuum machine service place. Uh, I'm not sure why they're together. It's kind of funny, but uh, people still do get uh, vacuum cleaners service. It's one of the last consumer items that you know, for the fancier vacuums that you can still get service done. Uh, thank goodness. And some of those places will service sewing machines. And if you decide to ever have one of these pedals, like this one, they may have one there they can sell you also. But, but regardless, if you ever need to have one of these wired to your cord, remember that this particular type of pedal is a very, it's a very simple operation. It takes me less than 10 minutes from the time I open the package, I take this off, I get my leads in, I use, um, I, I get my two wires uh, joined with the two wires from the cord that I'm, that I'm gonna be using. And it's really about a 10 minute or so, give or take, uh, uh, operation. And so I'm, the reason I mentioned this to you is not to, uh, to make, to oversimplify it. You may not want to, to do this and that's cool. But do not let anyone charge you $100 to do this either, folks. This does not take long. They may charge you something, and that's okay. They, they, they're a service center. They need, to, they need to, to, uh, to bring in business. But this, if anyone hooks this up for you to the sewing machine cord, it really should not cost that much. How much? I don't know. It depends on where you live. But if someone wants $100 to wire this up, uh, I think that's a bit much. You know, That's just my opinion. Uh, your, your opinions may vary, but, um, but again, this is uh, a pedal that it's my go-to pedal and I've pretty much decided, I've tried different ones before, but this is my favorite. And again, as I mentioned to you all, I love the fact that it's 1.2 amp, so it handles almost all of the sewing, vintage sewing machine motor amperage that you're going to come across. Again, there will be exceptions and uh, it, it is, uh, it's UL approved and I really like that. So. Uh, oh, might as well put this back on and let you guys see me do that. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. I think the term V Victor G George K Kite is the, uh, I think that's the actual brand. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, this time I'm going to go in the opposite order. I'm going to find the side where the hole is for the cord. Right now, obviously, I would have already hooked up a power uh, the cord to this right before I put this back on. I can take it off again easily, but I just want to demonstrate that for you. I'm not going to wire it up right now because I don't have a cord to wire it to. I don't have a machine that needs it. So I'm going to go to the side that is not the side that you first started on to to pry it open, and I'm going to put the pin in that that end and. So I've, again, I've got the pin that does not have the little opening for the, for, the, for the slide, and I'm gonna put that in. And when I do, notice that I want to come over, let's show you on this front side. Notice that there's a, there's a little uh, plastic uh, piece here that the top needs to fit over. Okay, that's what keeps the top end from coming off. Okay, it's kind of like a, just a little catch place. Okay, now that I know that that's on, Okay, so now I've got, I've got the two pins, and remember one side is my sliding side that I started with before, but this time I'm going to, I'm going to start with the side that uh, does not have that slider, which is 
which is this side where you see my thumb. And I'm going to push it in. So I've got that pin there mostly in. Now, if you come over here, now this is the side that has the little slide track. Remember, this is where I started when I first took it off. Now, this is going to be a little bit easier. I may want to take my screwdriver and just, just lift up a bit and it'll slide right in and she snapped right in. Uh, no mess, no fuss. So there you go. And again, this is, you will find lots of options for these on the internet. You may find one that you like better, but this has worked for me and I've been using these for quite a few years now. And I like the service I get from the, the So Classic folks. And I'm, I'm probably going to do another video. There are other places I go to for <clears throat> for supplies for sewing and I'll, I'll try to do a separate video on that and uh, hopefully that won't be a very long video but there you go guys this is the uh, final uh, not the final it's never the final uh, this is the third video in my sewing machine foot pedal series <laughs> and uh, I think my next video when I do another video on foot pedals it's probably going to be uh, restoring the um, the uh, button style singer foot pedals and and how to how to how to tune one up and clean one and get it ready to sew well again so hope you all enjoyed this hope you found it helpful if you have had uh, uh, experiences with foot pedals electronic foot pedals uh, sometimes those that are really old from the 60s and 70s they start to finally conk out uh, uh, let me know what your experience is let me know if you prefer electronic foot pedal control over some of the older style pedals. Maybe you have a preference for the older ones. I don't know. But uh, be, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. And I really appreciate you watching my channel. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.